dear forex traders trust you guys benefit from our forex trading analysis our forex market strategy and what forex trading education and guys in this particular content too where we'll be back testing our a strategy that we have been making profits with in the market and we're sharing this with you for free a strategy which includes what aside the fundamental and uh analysis of the market the technical concept where we get to apply the fibonacci retracement tool we also apply trading sessions our concept you know and a smart money concept trading that is very much simplified uh so guys you're going to be having a whole lot of benefits you're going to be getting a great deal by seeing this content especially if you intend to make profits off the market okay so if you love the idea and you love the concept and you've been following us so far on the channel don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't get to miss out each and every time we share our trading concept and um, strategy and analysis on the live market and then don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment sections too as we trade for us in millionaire logistics okay guys so here we are on the pound usd um 15 minutes chart and in this concept guys like i earlier promised we're going to show you exactly what we've been doing so far but we will be applying it in what the live market right here which you see before us um the good thing the market is still ticking okay uh so if you're seeing this concept there are a great deal of benefits that you stand to gain first off you're going to learn how to smartly and effectively extract profits from the market by what just knowing uh just being in the market at a specific time okay now that's one then again you're also going to learn more about what market structure dynamics market structure in the market easily without semantics without stress and all that we're going to do that right here on the chat so guys um on saturday on the 15th I did share a kind of very short idea, though it was kind of a meme on my Facebook story, and I gave out a call to sell a pound USD the following week. That being from the 17th of this month, that's on Monday, I gave out a call that from there we'll be looking at what shorting the pound USD, definitely on a longer time frame perspective. And guys, guess what? We'll be looking at what happened in the market. So this is the proof here that on the 15th you can see the timestamp there it was shared on my facebook story on my personal facebook story of course uh so we're just going to be showing you how we bought and sold in the market within several time frames within uh in the 15 minutes chart right 15 minutes time frame and how we've been able to uh, make some profit so far of the market definitely not all the moves but having that particular um directional bias in the market right and then guys also i've also been very busy i've been having this um very interesting chat with some guy who's um enthusiastic about first rate as myself so perhaps somehow if time permits maybe i will share that experiences on we share that experience rather on zoom on i think okay say on 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 the channel here but guys without boring you and wasting much of your time let's just go straight to the chat all right now from the fundamental perspective of the pound USD, when we're looking at the pound USD, um, I take cognizance of what the pound as a currency and then the US dollar too as a currency. And then I also take cognizance of the fact that when trading pound USD, GU, G for pound and USD for the United States dollar, I want to consider that what when it comes to pound, I'm basically dealing with London, right? that's uh from the british side so i'm dealing with the, the biggest capital city here london uh, as a trade center too and all and you know you have the biggest stock exchange well, one of the biggest uh largest stock exchange in london that's the london stock exchange right and then i'm also dealing with what the us that's the major country right that deals with the or controls the united states dollar all right and that means I also want to put in cognizance of what happens in what the United States. Okay. Now, having these two factors in mind, I also have to be rest assured that uh, whatever happens in London, whatever happens in Britain, definitely impacts what on the exchange, either demand or supply for the pound. And also whatever happens in the United States too, also has a way of what 
affecting either directly or indirectly the United States dollar. So the activities of these two countries very much can reflect on what happens on the chart technically. Now that's fact, that's not a myth, it's very much practical. Okay, so to confirm that guys, if you go through the NFP, which I won't be going to in this section, but if you go through the NFP report, you will find that that the NFP was just released. For those of you who don't know what the NFP is, guys, um, you can check in our playlist, the Forex uh, Forex Strategy and Education playlist, which the link, of course, is up there on the screen. You can check through majorly or most of the strategies and education we've shared. We've actually shared insights of what the NFP and basically how to uh, convert those numbers and all that into valuable information that can be applied on the chart. All right, now that's one. But then on the practical side of it, I go hindsight of that, uh, watching the news and actually being in the market as at the time it was released. And then I decipher the data to show that, uh, to prove that indeed the uh, USD still remains what the United States dollar still remains what bullish. And the United States dollar being bullish in the sense means that there was some uh, positive growth in the job numbers that were showed there in the statistics there in from the United States. So I basically um, applied down the chart, you know, and just knew very much that I was, I should be focusing on the long term or mid term um, short bias for the pound USD market and not just the pound USD market too, the euro USD or the USD are uh, similarly. Okay. However, guys, I consider pairs like odd usd nzd usd right i consider them to be commodity currencies now in my own concept and strategy kind of my own idea of trading why i consider these um pairs as current as um commodity pairs is that they are mostly affected from my observation they are mostly affected by uh commodity prices commodity prices and all in the sense that the base countries that deal with these currencies, like the Australian dollar, Australia being a country, is actually a commodity-based world country. So you can say it's a commodity-based world economy. Commodities in the sense that Australia is very rich in gold. Australia is also very rich in tin. Australia is very also very rich in aluminium and zinc. And these are basically, aside food to agriculture, these are basically what holds the economy. And so far, they also have their foreign reserve in gold. The same thing with New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand is also a commodity-based uh, currency too as well. So I just tend them as commodity-based. So uh, factors like the NFP and all that may not, may not, doesn't mean it doesn't affect though because the United States dollar is there, but it may not really affect the old USD as much as it will affect the pound USD considering the fact that when it comes to London and the kind of economy is basically um, currency based. So that's my own very simple way of uh, building sentiment in the market. Now, for the NFP guys, so the report there shows that after I decoded, the report there shows that, hey, USD, the US dollar is what remains bullish. Now, for the US dollar being bullish, that means the pound USD has to be in a bearish trend, right? Has to be in a bearish trend. Now, technically, when you look at pound USD on a weekly time frame, daily time frame, you find that that pound USD has been what in a, has in fact been in a downward trend, making what a uh, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, and so far. You can confirm this on your chart too as well. Now. So building that bias now, also remember that for you to say that the USD is bullish, now when paired to another currency, you're invariably, if you're, if you're buying the USD, you're invariably selling the currency which it is paired with. So in that case, I just had a mid-term bias of the pound USD to be what? Bearish. So I was looking for sell opportunities. Now that doesn't mean I won't buy. That doesn't mean I won't buy guys, but then like this price here, I took some buy positions up here, but invariably I will be seeing the market that, hey, 
and buying into a corrective uh, market, a corrective move. And guys, also the strategy and concept I apply in this market also makes it easier, right? Because um, there's an expected take profit level for reference that with 95% uh, chances of being hit and making profits of the market and also a stop loss reference zone, making it easier for me. Okay. Now, aside that, let's go to where we'll start the back test from and see how the market performs. So guys, right here, this is the reference week that we're talking about. Okay. Oh, forgive me guys, to be on this screen, I have to, uh, let me make some adjustments on the tool to see if I can change it. Okay, let me see if I can change the color, parameters, uh, feed levels, okay, make it black, okay, so here we are live, we have the Fibonacci tool here, okay, so I will be back testing this chart from the 17th, okay. one more minute let me adjust this to today okay all right so guys remember also as a base setting i have period separators on the chart like i do explain even in previous videos i have period separators that could easily tell me the beginning of the day and the end of what the day and guys also i also have a very simple tool here that helps me it may not be that visible but right here i can see the different trading sections within the day okay and then i have my smc for a long time i've been studying the word the smart money concepts and i've also been trading with it so to ease myself the stress too much uh to relieve myself of some things i need what is simple to here right here this is this hybrid programming and <laughs> the brokers don't want to know about this as much you know so this is this comes automatically and performs with what I have for my uh, manual analysis and just does a whole lot of you know um, a whole lot of decision making processes easier for me you know when trading. So this is what I just do. Okay, now we're here on the chart. This is for seventeenth. Now going back previously, having this bias that hey pound USD remains worth bearish like looking at it technically pound usd remains bearish so the first thing i do is what my high and my low of the previous day regardless right that's what i do high and low of previous day right and then i came here looking at this next day what i was expecting was what price to maybe come to this level and then if i see what the 10 a.m london section if you don't know why i'm doing this 10 a.m i'm going straight that's because in the previous uh content and the one before and for a whole lot of the fact the previous five contents from this channel you find out that i've been making emphasis on what the fibonacci retracement tool i've also been making emphasis on what the trading sections within the day intraday trading sessions and all to guide my analysis and then the daily market structure as well too so i could just go into this sketchy just a little bit just to throw more light on it one of the things i do what i take all these out of what the trading sessions and i do trade them now my favorite trading session trading sessions i um focus more on what the london session and the new york session because you have three major trading sessions you have three major trading sessions yeah you have what the london session the asian session and the new york sorry the new york session and then the asian session starts first which is for me here i'm in nigeria nigerian time it starts from 12 a.m right and then the new york session here yeah, starts by what 8 a.m all right 
while the London session, I mean, starts by 8 a.m., while the New York session starts by 1 p.m., right? And this is in real time. Now, when, tra when tracing it on the chart here, which I've mentioned a couple of times, on the chart here, what I have here, what will um, represent 8 a.m. is what 10 a.m. for London. And for New York, it's going to be 15 uh, zero, zero, which is kind of 3 p.m. So what? The chart time is what? Two hours ahead of real time. I take that into um, cognizance. And that's because I've been doing this for quite some time, for a long time now. So we have here on the chart here, it's 10 a.m. will be here. All right, 10 a.m. will be where here. It's exactly 10 a.m. Okay, now that's that about trading sessions. Okay, now when I'm looking at this, guys, um, when I'm looking at this, okay, I also want to take cognizance of what this right here, this market gap, because there is a market gap here. Uh, let me highlight it somewhere between here and here. There's a market gap, and this market gap has not been filled yet. But if we if we actually come back, because this market gap has to be filled, though, the market gap has to be filled. And if we look into the chart, if we come, if we go to where the chart is today, we may see that this gap has in fact been filled. All right, see you see the market here coming here, coming to this level. Of course, it has been filled. Now, market gaps, ninety-seven percent of the time, may not be filled immediately, but then they still come back to be filled but then that does not really affect our day trading guys right we kick the market off from where it is that's the good news all right so what i do is that i have the previous high and low of the previous day I have the trend now the next thing i want to do is i could have those areas as reference i could have those areas there as reference so i have here this is my 38.0 fib level should you not know what i use the fib levels to do the fib levels guys are what are important levels at which the price will react they are more likely to react at important what levels resistance levels support levels supply zones demand zones at these fibonacci levels they are they also serve as what technical psychological levels on the chart so i pay very keen attention to them as well okay now I have here, this is my 38.8, this is my 50, right? And then this is what, 61, all right, 61 fib level. And also I have here 79 fib level, 79, right? Okay. Now that's that from what, the previous day high and low. So I can confidently remove this so I don't have multiple um lines on the chart so i don't have multiple fibonacci as well so looking at the chart here guys where do you see the market going to you can see that we're still targeting here but the daily market guys has begun to what form a high now this is another thing i put into cognizance i take cognizance of moves like this impulsive moves that breaks what a level now, when I mean the level, you can see right here that the market was started ranging around here. It started at this level right here. But then at this point here, what we noticed was what an impulsive move to the upside. You can see all bullish candles, all bullish candles to the upside, breaking what this Asian, this um, structure here. Okay, this level rather, this level here. All right, so I take cognizance of this things too as well. Now, because of this move, this impulsive move right here, this bullish move right here, um, I'll be expecting a corrective move to the downside and going in the direction of this move because this move here shows the presence of what institutional buyers that has formed the Asian session. If we check the time right here, this is what we will notice. 7.45, uh, 9 a.m. This is from, as I seen, 7.45, uh, 7.15, rather, 9 a.m. Let me see from 7, okay? Right here, this will be like a 5 a.m. So we're still trading between what the Asian session as at this time. 5 a.m. to what? Um, 9 a.m. This 7 a.m. Because we earlier established the fact that the, the chart time is what? Two hours ahead of our real time. Okay? Of our real time. All right. So 
Now, looking at these levels, you can obviously see well that the price did not react to any of these levels. In fact, as at the time where this market was printed, personally, it is not my trading session. I'm in Nigeria. By this time, perhaps I should just be waking up from waking up for the day and perhaps be getting myself prepared to trade what the most active trading session of the day. So why will I be trading the most active section of the day? Let me share that in very simple terms, guys. Okay. Now, considering that we're trading pound USD, just one minute, considering that we're trading pound USD and I'm uh, putting into cognizance the countries being London and the United States that are what the uh, major countries I should be focusing on. And then the most active trading session here that shows what 8 a.m. 8 a.m. is what the business time for in London, right? That's when most uh, physical trading activities begin. That's when that's broad daylight. That's the morning in what in London. And also 1 p.m. when you look at it, 1 p.m. Uh, real time, 1 p.m. Nigerian time here for New York. That is like 8 a.m. the Eastern time zone in New York. That's the time. So that's like 1 p.m. Nigerian time is like where the wake up hour, you know, the where the day, that's the, the break of dawn, like the morning in what um, U.S. So that's where trading activities physically start. That's where they have their banks open. That's the time window and all that. So these time zones, this time are very sensitive and price mostly like we all know that the chart here the price you see on the chart is what a reflection of what what happens in real life regarding price and currencies as well okay so we have here this time so looking at this right here we can see that the levels here are a little bit invalidated per se even though you can see that the return time by what 11 30 the price came to this resistance to this um level here which was supposed to be a barrier resistance level but has turned support over here so seeing that i didn't get what i was expecting because price was supposed to perhaps if i see price around here you know host around here i buy a london session i want to buy the price to 38 level right here just from here if that happened like that from here to here would have gotten me like 76 pips perhaps i would have made maybe like 40 out of it okay but then I didn't use the Fibonacci tool to what? I want to plot my Fibonacci tool from the low. I want to plot my Fibonacci tool from what? The low of the day, seeing that the market has now made what? A bullish move, right? I want to target what? For the low of the day and then the high before the London session. The high before the London session. It could be either of these two because I want to confirm the time. Okay, so you see. The high of the London session, that, that's this high, the first this, the first high. So that's what I want to do now. When I do that, guys, this is exactly what I'm going to get. Right? The high before the London session. Now I have price coming to the levels that I want to. And 10 a.m. is right here. Now, after this move, you can see price reacting to what? The 79.0 fib level. So mostly, I want to confirm a what? I want to confirm a bullish move, right? Right here. But then I'm a risk taker. I saw this price here at this previous level, somewhere around here. First off, I took this trade right here and got 30 pips off the market first. And then later on, after I confirmed this price move here, this uh, bullish hammer. Now, guys, talking about the bullish hammer, you know what the bullish hammer means? You have a body and what a long week a short body and a long week mostly a green uh green short body okay now this shows what buy bias presence in the market if you don't know much about this it's okay to look through what candle reversal patterns all right all right so i saw that move here and i got into the market somewhere around here somewhere around here and took some profits to this level to this 0, 0.0 level guys i didn't write the time mind you because i had in mind that hey no matter what's happening i'm looking forward to sell the pound usa okay and then finally price what well, price got to the peak right here on monday and then on tuesday was the day of the day right that was the day. you can see all these prices highlighted here 
So guys, let's deal with market structure once more. Now, say for Monday, the price got here, right? Made a high right here. And then the market came back. Now, on this second day, you can see price making a high too. But this high right here, like I said earlier, is what higher than this high. So this becomes a lower high. And the possibility of this market going further to the downside is very high. Now, mind you guys, I've done a whole lot of things before looking at this chart. First off, I built a fundamental and sentimental bias of the market from what the data reports that I went through. The data reports, the fundamental data reports, the NFP reports, and definitely every other news would fall in line. But in further concepts, perhaps we will throw more light on that. Okay. So, moving forward to the next day. This was exactly how I approached the market. Now this, I'm done with my Fibonacci tool for that day, making some profits. I'll also remove these reference zones right here. I'll also remove the reference zones, okay? I'll also remove the reference zones, okay? And then I'll remove my Fibonacci tool. So let's say we don't know what's going on in the market. We just saw this move. So we're technically, we're assuming that, oh, pound GSD is still in, a, in an uptrend because the previous day is bullish all right and we have this okay but right here i have my marker here for here being that though i have this although i we're not giving this tool for free right now we're not sharing it with anybody it's a personal trading tool and it can only be shared with you on demand all right just to be shared with every other person on demand okay so at this point right here this is the market from here a higher a what a low so um we're seeing this move here this very bullish move to this side too as well but we want to get to what 10 a.m and 10 a.m is exactly where 10 a.m is okay now having this high and this low guys this is exactly where i'll meet this market after price has well made a lower high so definitely uh, the pound USD so far, I could be expecting that price may come up to this point, you know, before it comes to the downside. But at least I'm not expecting price to break this um, lower high here and also break this. Now, that's one thing to put in mind, okay? Now, seeing this move here, I have this reference that, oh, if I meet this market somewhere around here, I'm going to sell the market easily easily at this level at the 0, 0.0 level or close to it i'm going to sell it place my stop loss above and all but then this was exactly where i saw the market this is where 10 a.m okay 10 a.m chart time 8 a.m real time and then i want to do something this is this is where the trades i took personally i saw this market at this point here you know after the price came here i set the stop loss above here personally and this was exactly where i set my take profit i do at this point here but i got off the market somewhere around 35 pips why because uh the market is very unpredictable and personally i was seeing this move here but seeing the market here maybe i was expecting okay since the previous day's structure is bullish technically there could be a reaction somewhere around these levels so either of these levels guys i'll it's a potential no one knows the direction of the market personally if there's a potential that hey this market could react at any of this point and in fact push to the upside so either of these levels could be what a support level that will make price to go to the upside all right so i just took some profits there but this was exactly where i was convinced that the market is in fact going all the way down after this move right here after this move to this point this is a very interesting part now now, if you look at this previous day right here, you can see that all day, everything was bullish, right? Bullish flow. You can see that this day had a bullish market flow, all right? But then, coming to this current day, guys, coming to this current day, the day where it is right here, this should be on a Tuesday, the sentiments of the market changed. In that, where the market started bullish to the Tokyo session, and where even before the new york session it had what become bearish breaking what this support level where the market during the tokyo session the support level that was formed in the tokyo session 
our guy here so guys this was exactly what i did without thinking without breaking my bones or without thinking too much of the chap having all these parameters in place guys is very much amazing so i after trading the the london session of course looking for opportunities within the new york session this was exactly what i got i brought my parameters to where the low before the new york session the low before the new york session and guys this was exactly what i found this was the beginning of the new york session and within that time frame guys i saw the market you can see the market very much re um, reacting around the 50 feet level and making having some challenges here uh, personally after this bullish bearish move here i took the market here uh set a stop loss somewhere around here and then i went all the way for this level i set my stop loss somewhere i think somewhere around here guys and i went somewhere around here and i went all the way down for this level but guess what guys i didn't take this profit all to this particular point i got off the market here seeing that the market was ranging i couldn't just wait i got off the market here i locked about 41 pips or 40 pips around that that area but then i wasn't dismayed guys this is where i made the final move but i just hope this concept sticks if you don't get it i'm not paying much detail to this particular content because i've shared this concept over and over again this idea on the market back tested and all and the content right here is it's far too stretched okay but having right here the day and having you know the previous day high same day high and previous day low and marking right here with the chart guys without looking that much further deep into it this was a very convincing move we had the london session here right here we had the london session right here and i have this you know with expectations to when the market the tokyo session started here definitely if i see the reaction price reacting around these levels on the sell side i will pick a sell within that particular trading session of course but let me take this off i don't know where okay we still have this sentiment here okay so we have a clear chart here so same thing previous day high previous day high hello right here we got this okay you can see the price here somewhere at the beginning of the tokyo session played around the 61 feet level and at the beginning of what you can see the london session somewhere around here it didn't even come down that much and seeing the price trading between the 38 and the zero not right there it was an opportunity for me to take back here observe this move to this upside and had an opportunity of 40 pips but now these are the reference zones okay remember so i can have this line here that this right here is a uh, the reference zone at the 38.050 and then where the uh 30 the 61.61.8 level and then a zero fib level here you know just around this range then i can take my fibonacci tool off and then looking at the previous price guys this is what i can do from the tokyo the beginning of the day the high and then the low before the beginning of what the london sessions right here and then guys though i didn't take a buy you know i observed the market because i wanted to ride in the direction of what this daily structure here. and same price react at this 38 fib level this is exactly where i took price and i was able to get out with just about 40 pips or so about 40 pips of this move and now Within this move, guys, I was not very much confused that hey, my uh, prediction, my trade call is already uh, materializing. You know, being that I shared the analysis earlier, I didn't share any analysis, it was just uh, a poster kind of text that Pound ES is going to sell, and it was like a trade call, and then it came to life, that's real, okay? And then we continued in the direction of that trend, you can see how from here to here, same thing, high and low, very easy, easy peasy no complications just chat just chat just technical analysis fundamental analysis which i uh, build those sentiments though once in a while within the month or just at the beginning of a new month with just the most important uh price data the most important um economic data and economic release from the market all right that's what i do 
and so far it's been great it's been great all right now on the previous day just like we have here guys you can see um high and low of previous day and before you know it this is yesterday this is yesterday of course uh yesterday being thursday 20th and right here seeing how the market is reacting okay um tokyo london this is the beginning of the london session you can see that price hadn't gotten to this low yet and i saw the price at the up level and being that it's bearish being that it's bearish you can see just around here within from the bearish flow and i'm seeing this movement here i took the risk of what selling the market going short from here targeting the zero level 59 percent 59 49 pips got that but i didn't get up to that level i think i got around 41 too you know 41 pips and then same thing same thing tokyo session uh seeing the price seeing this move now this is a very important concept guys this is a very important concept seeing here this is the high of that day and you can see very much how the price was broke you know as though it had a bullish flow had a bullish flow to the upside looking at this market here looking at this you know impulsive move again to the upside breaking this level here so it's something to be very quite keen about so it's okay to change the sentiment of the market low towards high before this section here okay and then from this particular price though at the beginning of the london session here i was able to sell back you know sell back into the into the like a corrective move first and then same price move up to where move to this high here now this is exactly a simple trading concept flowing direction of the market from the low of that day to the high before the new york session okay now seeing this this is a move i missed honestly i just didn't bother about this market anymore and then i changed the direction of the flow definitely that's the exact thing i will do that's the exact thing i do each and every time regardless of my uh fundamental bias you know i just do it regardless high low and high of the previous day okay and then this is exactly what i got today you can see what happened in the market although i was expecting to sell though because i mean market is bearish here yeah? but you can see that sell zone around where the tokyo 61.8 fibonacci level again you can see it very much obvious here around the 61.8 and i'm seeing the london session right here but then because the market is going in this direction definitely i will just set this as what the reference again the zero level right in the bullish order though in bullish order but then um we also should know that the fibonacci two year works in very interesting ways you know just because i said this in the direction of the market you can see in the direction of the market right here it worked in the direction of the flow the market flow but coming back coming back I set it definitely in the direction of the flow low and high regardless this is the low of the day and the high of the previous day okay but then the market came here gave me this confirmation here and guys for the books here we only share out this tool on we only share out this to the markups you see here we only share them on demand right on demand okay so having this as reference here i think the fibonacci is off now I have what the high of what the day within the day to what the low before the beginning of the london session all right and that brings us to right here okay so looking at this i think if i take off take the reference to the way I should take the reference line away. This is exactly what we will see. Permit me to zoom in a little bit. Okay. Now, what do we see? Price reacting around the 61.8 Fib level, just around here. Just around here. Close to where? Close to the 79. 
0.0 fib level somewhere around here very close and you can see this move here so this was exactly where i took my trade off here and i went to minus 0 0.27 and left the market up there so i didn't trade this I'm not trading this right now but if i were to do this the exact thing market is bullish right now so i will be taking it where to this particular level here right here same way the low before what the new york section and definitely since i won't be getting any reaction here i'll be leaving the market and when price comes here and break back into the structure perhaps this is was this is where i'll be taking the trade here right here right here take the trade off so that's all about this so guys if you love this concept guys don't forget again don't forget we're still with the millionaire logistics fx and we're here giving you a concept we share on our var our trading and all and we hope you enjoy it as much okay so right here on the market right here on the market is making a price here is making a kind of bullish flow um definitely it's making a bullish flow that's what we see until monday I uh, will know where it's going to because the day has not ended yet. So we still could be having what a high and a low until price breaks this level, right? Then we'll have a bullish flow, right? Bullish flow from the low here to the high. Otherwise, if price stops around this point, we still have the bearish flow from low to high. So that's that's that about it. That's that about it. It's very cool. So why I would want to explain, okay, why we have this bullish move here. Definitely today is a test day. There could be some uh, fundamental economic release from the side of the, the pound that's coming in from London and, and the kind of, you know, not too good news, not too positive news coming in from the from, uh, US, from the New York, from New York. And that's why price perhaps it's making this very impulsive and corrective move, you know, within the New York uh, time uh, training session, okay, within the New York training session. So I believe this move right here is as a result of uh, economic release, right? So looking at the charts here, looking at the charts, it's very much cool having this move, you see from here, having this move to the upside. Wow, 150 pips. So that's that about that. So let's, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section. And uh, we, lo we love you. And we hope you stick to the family as much. All right. Take care.